Okay, so this is uh, this is uh, work that came out from uh, from my participation in uh, the same program that Alain was in uh, uh, described uh, an NBR social security uh, international social security and uh, the, oh. <laughs> the the background uh, to the problem we study is. Um, is this development. It's, uh, th this shows the labor force participation rate in different countries and how it developed over the years. And you can see that, that it's, it's, it's uh, quite dramatic, uh, for most countries it's a qu quite dramatic uh, development from, from a labor force participation rate uh, around 90% in the 1960s to very low participation rates here, uh, like uh, the most extreme cases in, on, on this graph is, is Belgium that that, uh, that has a labor force participation around 20 percent. But e e even e even Sweden here is it has moved from from uh, from 90 percent to to um, around 60 percent in, in, by the end of this period. Uh, this is men, by the way, so it's it's uh, the most dramatic uh, development for them. So this is this is uh, other countries. You can see that that um, uh, France, for example, has a similar development to to, to Belgium. It's a very low labor force participation rate here. Um, uh, of course, w what is the background to the idea here is to, to figure out the, the background and, and uh, to this, this uh, development. And uh, as economists, uh, we, the first volume of this project, we looked only on, on economic incentives. So this, this graph is a sort of a key thing. It, it looks at uh, uh, the relationship between tax, the sort of implicit tax of staying in the labor force and related it to, to unused capacity. So uh, people that are out of the labor force. And the logarithm of, of, of the tax, uh, uh, the, the, the tax force here is, is calculated as uh, uh, the accrual rate in the social security system, when you also consider income taxes, indirect taxes and housing allowances, and you, then you d deduct what you pay into the social security system. Okay, and then you divide it, take as the share of, 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 uh, of earnings. So it's, it's, it's measured in percent. And you can see that this, this shows a very clear picture that, that countries that have comparatively low or good economic incentives to say in the labor force have also high labor force participation rate. And uh, uh, countries that have, have, have disincentives to say in the labor force have, have very low labor force participation rate. Uh, okay, and, and then at least in the, in the beginning of the program, in the project, we, we sort of reasoned that that, that uh, this must be this must be the end of the story. Uh, health development is is then we looked at at um, at uh, life expectancy, for example, and and that that has gone in the re reverse trend. F people live longer, and then 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 we reasoned that. This must mean that, that they have better health and could be able to work longer, right? Uh, however, it could be, uh, maybe it's not that simple. It could be the case that, that people, although they live longer, have worse health because they have better health care that could, could, could um, could keep keep them alive, but but uh, they survive and and are are not uh, are restricted in the work capacity. 
so uh, in this, uh, uh, so, so this is this is the candidates. Uh, so in this paper, I, I look on, on the development in Sweden and look at changes in population health. How does it relate to, to changes in, in, in labor force participation? Right? And also how changes in eligibility rules in the in the uh, disability insurance program affects labor force participation right? uh, most people that retire before the normal retirement age at age 65 in sweden uh, retire through the disability program so it's it's uh, the most interesting program to look at if you're interested in in finding why people leave the labor force earlier and earlier Uh, okay, so, so we have, have uh, three questions here. Uh, so so can, the, can development in, in population health explain the, the development in, in labor force participation rate among older workers? And then uh, can changes in eligibility rules on the DI system explain uh, changes in DI utilization? And related to that, uh, could it explain changes in labor force participation rate, or is it is it is the effect on DI utilization crowded out by utilization of other programs, other, other social programs or other uh, uh, support programs? Do, do they find uh, their way out of the labor force, irrespective of that you sort of fix this hold of, of for escaping the uh, this utility of, of working. Okay, so this is the plan. So first I have a very short overview of the Swedish income security system. And then I look at, at pathways out of, re, out of the labor force, path, pathway to retirement. Then uh, look at development of population health uh, and then we look at the first question how it relates to to retirement behavior then uh, you look at, at changes in eligibility rules and then uh, finally how it affects uh, DI utilization and, and uh, labor force participation uh, Okay, uh, so, so very briefly on a on, uh, very brief description of, of the Swedish income security system. It, uh, as some of you know, it's, we have changed from a defined benefit plan to a so-called notional defined contribution plan. And it's gradually changing from, from the cohort born in 1938. So that, that, that cohort is 20% in the new system and then it's for every cohort, it, the share increases by 5%. So finally, the, the, the cohort born in 1957 will be, be, be entirely in the new system. Uh, OK, so uh, the old system consists of, of uh, two parts, one basic pension and one income-related supplementary pension called ATP system and it can be uh, claimed from from age 61 with a 0.5% uh, actuary re reduction for every month of early withdrawal and a 0.7 increase for for delayed uh, retirement after age 65 to until after, until age 70 uh, okay, the idea with the new system is that the contribution or the tax is fixed to 18.5% of, of the wage sum. And uh, uh, up, up to, to the social security ceiling and, and up above that uh, the, the tax is, is not related to future benefits but pure tax. 
16% uh, is devoted to, uh, to a notional defined contributions uh, to the PSQ. Yeah, I missed the The first two items here. Uh, so, so it's 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 uh, it's financed through uh, it's a it's a proportional tax or employers payroll tax on 18.5 percent of the wage sum, uh, and uh, it's up to the social security ceiling. This is this is. Uh, uh, Related to to your future benefits, on in with the actuarial fair system, so it's 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 uh, indexed with a wage sum every year. But above that ceiling, it's uh, it's a pure tax that's paid into the government budget. Uh, it's uh, this is. Um, In shekels is 20,000 20, shekels. So it's it's uh, it's the idea. I think it's like 20% of the population is has earnings above the social security ceiling. Yeah. The I the the. the Original idea was to have 10% above the ceiling, but uh, it's gradually, with economic growth, it, it gradually increases. Okay, so 16% so, so six, uh, of, of this tax is, is, is the pay as it goes scheme. And then 2.5% is, uh, is a fully funded scheme. So that that's that you pay into a to a privately managed fund. You can choose freely with uh, between 650 or 850 different uh, fund managers. Okay, uh, and in the, in addition, Sweden, as, as you maybe know, a uh, very unionized uh, labor market. So it's so. Most of the of the labor market is, or 90% of the labor market is covered by central government, uh, central union agreements, and uh, it's uh, connected to these agreements. We have there are four different pension schemes: one for central government employees, one for local government, and one for white, and one for blue collar workers, and. These schemes are primarily uh, related to the in income above the social security ceiling. Okay, the disability insurance used to be uh, part of the of the pension program, so it was uh, it was calculated in the same way as the as, as the basic and supplementary pension. Uh, and then uh, for the for future earnings that you couldn't haven't realized yet, they have a, they did the Social Security Administration made predictions of your individual future earnings based on your previous earnings. Uh, however, in the in the in the pension reform, this was changed. And uh, calculated as as uh, sixty four percent of average earning of the f five years preceding your your disability. Uh, okay, and and, and it's it's um, the. Eligibility has gone through s several eras here, and originally it used to be a, a, a pure insurance for 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 uh, pure uh, insurance against uh, disability or not being able for health reason to 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 do your work. But then in the 1970s they gradually uh, changed that, and and uh, the 
the implementary rule for for uh, special eligibility rule for for all the workers uh, so uh, uh, for example and and uh, uh, it 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 has to do with with uh, the labor market if you ha if you're long term unemployed you're not 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 uh, obligated to go through retaining programs for example so the uh, so gradual changes in eligibility rules uh, and in 1972 uh, they also allowed implemented a rule for pure labor market reasons so long term all the workers were uh, eligible for for disability payment this was this was gradually changed first in the reform in 1991 when they abolished uh, uh, rules for p pure labor market reasons and uh, secondly in 1997 uh, when they uh, abolished the rules for for labor market reasons in combination with health reasons Okay, so look, let us look closer to the development of labor force participation rates or employment. Uh, you can see that, that uh, this is the most interesting gr group, I, f I think. This is those uh, age 60 to 64. You can see that it, it's, a, it's a steady decrease or a trend, decrease in trend until late 1990s or mid 1990s and then it's a reverse trend here for that group uh, for the two younger groups here among men it's it's uh, it's uh, same trend here but but then a sort of new change in since 1990s and the same for 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 the youngest group 45 to to 54, sort of a stable level at uh, after the mid 1990s. Uh, for women here, it's it's a uh, it's a it's a more complicated uh, development because it's it's uh, it's a development through for women going out on the labor market, but then uh, uh, so that's a court effect. And, but then a uh, sort of a period effect here with, with uh, decreasing employment or labor force participation rate. Basically the same as, as for, for men here in the, in the, since mid-1990s. Uh, here, here, is the, here is the survival function of, of, of uh, uh, for labor force participation, and you can see that that for men this has shifted inwards compared to 1965, and very little has happened since uh, since a little. If you compare 2003 and 1985, there is some change here. For women, it's it's uh, it's uh, particular for the for. Uh, uh, since 1965, it's a very different picture. And for uh, Bannon, I uh, or Burnt, uh, uh, we talked yesterday about about uh, the age of of, of uh, remaining life, expected life. I included these these graphs for his him, and, and now he's unfortunately not here. <laughs> but this is this is correcting for the, the, this is taking Bernd's uh, perspective and and uh, uh, look at labor force participation at constant mortality risk so it's it's a way of, of correcting for taking Bernd's per perspective and 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 looking at uh, labor force participation from the perspective of remaining lifetime and here you can see that it, it's a it's a big change from 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 uh, 85 to 2003, retire much earlier now in, uh, uh, at the constant mortality risk. Uh, okay, here is the here is the utilization of the of the disability insurance, and you can see that that uh, 
Uh, it's a quite dramatic, it's a huge increase here from, from 10% to, to, to 35% in the oldest age group. And also, and, and then a, a dramatic decrease from, from down to 20%. And in this group, it's, it's more stable. And in the youngest, it's, it's actually increasing a bit. Among women, it's, it's not, uh, not that great change. It's, it's an increase and then a, in a almost stable level here. And, uh, and a trend toward increasing uh, utilization of the disability program uh, for the youngest age group. Uh, Okay, this is, this is uh, the incidence of, of the inflow into the disability program. And the most uh, uh, remarkable development here is the huge e decrease in, 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 in the inflow into the program uh, by the end of the, of the era. And this has to do with the, with the much stricter eligibility rules here in the, by the end of the, of the period. Okay, uh, so how do uh, people exit from the labor market? Uh, and here is, uh, here is uh, three graphs. This is, uh, this is DI utilization, this is uh, non-labor force participation, and this is non-employment. So the difference between these two curves is the unemployment rate. And uh, the difference between these two curves is people who utilize other programs than, than, uh, than uh, DEI or unemployment insurance. It could be, could be uh, negotiated pension plans or, or, uh, or the sick pay insurance, short-term uh, disability insurance. Uh, but we can see here that, that, that uh, for these groups, the youngest age group, uh, the most, by far most important uh, pathway out of the labor force is disability insurance, up to at least 1990. After that, it's uh, from uh, after the economic crisis in, in, the, in Sweden in the 1990s. Unemployment has also been a pathway out of the, of the labor force. For women, you can see that, that it's, uh, uh, this gap has to do with, uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, changing female labor force participation. But after 1990, you can see that it's quite similar uh, picture as, as for men. Um, you can see here for, for the 64 uh, to, to um, 60 to 64 eight year age group, it's it's um, it's uh, uh, development uh, towards other programs than the and than UI and, and or DI, and it's we really look more carefully into this. It's shows that, that people have, have started to utilize negotiated uh, pension plans more, more and more. But it, it, we're, we're, we're it, uh, sort of reassuring here that, that, that DI seems to be the most important pathway. So, so the idea of this paper is not, uh, is, is seem to survive this. Okay, so the, the development in, in health, and, uh, and we have three main health measures. The first one is the mortality rate. Uh, and you can see that, that uh, it, it is a quite dramatic change here in mortality rate. From, for, for this, this is uh, mortality uh, 
the blue blue lines are for men and the red ones are for women and you can see that uh, uh, if we have equal mortality rate of five percent here uh, it that has changed for men from from age 73 to 78 and for for women from 75 to 82 so it it, it, it is a uh, it's a dramatic development uh, here we, here we see mortality for for uh, men and women uh, in the in the di three different age groups and you can see that that um, that uh, uh, there is, a, is, a, is although it's a, it's a mortality gap, uh, men have improved their mortality more than women. The second uh, health measure is, is inpatient care. So this is hospital nights. And uh, you can see that, that it, this shows a slight improvement in health. The disadvantage with this health measures is that it also is affected by by uh, budget considerations. Uh, there uh, has been several budget cuts in the Swedish healthcare system, and probably this has has uh, given the impression of of a of a, of a greater change in the health in the li underlying health uh, 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 that, than is, is, is a, a, the actual situation. Thirdly, we have looked at successive uh, uh, outcomes from, from uh, um, a so-called level of living survey. Uh, and this is a this is a very big uh, uh, microdata survey that was initiated in 1975. So each each year they they ask like 20,000 uh, people, uh, sample of 20,000 people, and ask detailed questions about their living conditions and also detailed questions about their health and. Uh, uh, lots of questions on diagnosis, and in the paper, if you're interested, uh, it, it's there are lots of, of we have lots of graphs of of, of uh, on the development of subjective health measures and diagnosis. I think this this uh, and it would take much too long time to go through all this, but uh, this sort of uh, uh, summarizes the 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 basic measure with the basic basic mes message here uh, th this is compares mortality and the subjective the the uh, the prevalence of, of people that consider themselves in poor health uh, subjectively and uh, here you can see that that uh, mortality it's the age group uh, uh, it's improved in in all age groups for men the subjective health measure, it's st in the youngest age group, it's, it's very, more or less the same. It has stayed the same. It ha has not improved over this period under study. However, for the oldest, two oldest age groups, it, there is an uh, improvement for men, right? For women, it's, it's, uh, it's a similar development, but, but uh, even more dramatic in the sense that that uh, health status seemed to have de deteriorated uh, between 1976 and 2005 for the two youngest age groups. It's only it has only improved for the oldest age group here. And so so so, all right. Um, and, and so, so summing up, it it's, it's has improved uh, in, for old, the older age group compared to the younger, and it has improved 
for men compared to women. Okay. Here we have plotted the, the uh, development of, of uh, uh, DI utilization, the red curve here, the mortality rate, and three subjective measures of, of uh, health. This is poor health, impaired ability to move, and impaired work capacity. And you can see here that, that, that uh, for men in the oldest age group, these subjective measures seem to have improved along with the uh, with, uh, lower utilization of the DI program. For women, th this is not apparent. And also, that, that sort of matches with the development of, of their DI utilization in recent years. It's, 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 as we saw previously, it's, it's quite stable. And also these two measures of, three measures of subjective health seem to, 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 be, to be stable. It's, there are no apparent trend. Also for, for, for the younger age groups, you can see that, that the younger age group have a slight increase in DI utilization and no apparent improvement in, in the subjective uh, health measures. Actually, for, for, uh, for women, you have, there's an increase in the impaired work, impaired, subjective impaired work capacity that goes along with, with higher D, DI utilization. Okay, for the middle age group here, it's, it's no apparent change. So our conclusion here is that, that uh, mortality has very low, uh, low um, couldn't explain the development by, by changing the mortality. It was a, it was a long term decrease in mortality uh, that did not match up with the uh, trend in the DI utilization. However, for, for, uh, if we compare these groups with the subjective health measure, it sort of matches up. The, uh, the oldest group of, of, uh, of men have both experienced the, the, the largest improvement in health and also the largest decrease in their utilization of the DI program. Uh, and the, but that is not true for the younger groups. Okay. So, so, so uh, our conclusion is from the health uh, development is that it, it does indeed seem to have a, uh, a correlation with, with, uh, with the DEI utilization. So it's not only economic incentives. We have to revise that from, from the previous rounds. Uh, okay, so let's look at at uh, eligibility rules, and then we, we look at these four reforms. First, the implementation of the, of the special eligibility rules for all the workers, uh, and then the, uh, the abolishment of these two, uh, the, these two special rules for, for all the workers. And here, here we have, have uh, here we look at the uh, utilization of the DI program. Uh, and then we have marked the, the introduction of the reforms. Uh, all right. Uh, and then uh, also marked the abolition of the, of the special uh, eligibility rules for all the workers. Uh, and our conclusion is here that that it, it is uh, and and it, okay so th this shows the development in in the in the three different age group this takes the difference between the affected age group 60 to 64 compared to the uh, to a control group the the age group that was not affected and you can see here that it is uh, sort of a pattern towards, it, it makes 
sense that that it, it uh, does these special eligibility rules had a very large effect on utilization. You can see that uh, the difference between the age group goes up from 5% to almost 20% by the end of the period. Uh, and then uh, it, it has a very large effect on utilization when you abolish these rules. It goes, the difference goes back from 20% and almost immediately to, to down to 5%. And, and it's a similar development for, for women. However, if we, if we, if we look at uh, labor force participation rate and employment, it, it, it's not that, that obvious. Here is, is the youngest group, the control group, and here is the older group, the sort of experimental group, and here is the, the difference. And uh, here you can see that, that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, the implementation of the, of the special eligibility rules seem to have a huge effect also on employment and, and uh, labor force participation. But the abolition of, of these rules do not seem to have an immediate effect. The first, the first, uh, the first uh, reform here, the special the uh, pure labor market reason, eligibility rules, uh, does not seem to have an effect. And then the combined effect initially do not seem to have an effect. Uh, so uh, uh, if you compare here to, to 2004, does not seem to have an effect. It's, but later on here it seems to, to have an effect, a long-term effect, towards a, a smaller difference between these two groups. In, in. Irritating thing is that, that we wrote an uh, 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 article in Journal of Public Economics, and then we only had data until this point, so, so we couldn't follow the later development. <laughs> and, and our conclusion from that was well, that it was sort of crowded out by other programs. Okay, so summing up, conclusions, one minute. I, I could do it in 45 seconds. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, uh, in, indeed, population health seem to affect uh, DI utilization, and both DI utilization and employment. So, uh, the groups that, that have a, the highest improvement in health also have a largest employment increase. Uh, eligibility rules seem to have uh, effect, large effect on DI utilization, although it's not in, not in all cases it had an effect on employment. So it's it's a, it's a, it's a uh, element of crowding out here. Also. Okay, thank you. <laughs>